just when you thought things couldn't get any crazier for the Edmonton Oilers, we had ourselves the NHL Efficiency Spending article published on The Athletic. This is the same one that we have been talking about for the past few days now. I mean, it's been all over the place here. NHL Contract Efficiency Rankings 2024. And, you know, we had made our videos, we had spoken about how the Canucks were one of the top teams, we had spoken about how the Red Wings barely got worse, and how the Canadians have been kind of floating in there, and some other teams as well. But, one of the best teams in this list that The Athletic goes out there and proposes is none other than the Edmonton Oilers. In fact, if you go over to the list, they're ranked as the number two team. Now, The Athletic is paid for material, so we're not going to go out there and screenshot the article directly, but what we are screenshotting is the post made on the R Edmonton Oilers subreddit, because Rusty Rogger went out there and posted the chart that we care about. The Oilers are given an A ranking, not an A+, plus, not an A-, minus, just an A, and some of the names that they have on their roster really do stand out as huge, huge dubs. Now, we're not going to go over the entire song and dance here, but we will acknowledge that there are some very positively surplused valued contracts, and there are some very negative ones too. For example, Evan Bouchard is a $13.4 million model defenseman, but his actual contract is 3.9 mil, so his surplus is $9.5 million. Meanwhile, you've got Darnell Nurse, who is a $9.3 million defenseman, who is playing only at a $5.9 million rate, so... His surplus is negative 3.4. You also have yourselves Evander Kane on the forward side of things, making 5.1 million despite being a 2.4 million dollar caliber player, so he's in the red too, minus 2.7 million. But what I wanted to do in this video was talk about one of the best contracts in the NHL when it comes to surplus on forward. No, it's not Connor McDavid or Leon Draisaitl, although McDavid does have a higher surplus. He's at $18.7 million evaluated, but his real AAV is 12.5. What I wanted to talk about, though, was the other A-plus graded contract on the Oilers' forward core. It's Zach Hyman whose model value is $11.3 million, but who is actually only making $5.5 million. The surplus per year is $5.8 million, if you do the math, and then you multiply that out by four, you have a total surplus of $23.1 million. Zach Hyman, ladies and gentlemen, according to The Athletic, is an $11.3 million caliber player. And honestly, if you had told me that when he was a Toronto Maple Leaf at any point throughout his career, it would have been seen as a pretty big spoof. A lot of people would have gone out there and said, really, Zach Hyman? That guy, 11 million bucks? He maxed out at 41 points in 71 games played with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And sure, there was always going to be some contention as to whether or not it would have been better if he stayed in Toronto or left Toronto, but once he had gotten this huge contract with the Edmonton Oilers' seven-year deal, $5.5 million a season, a lot of people were saying, oh, holy overpay, Batman. Zach Hyman is going to age poorly into that contract. If he gets 40 to 50 points a year, you're happy. 5.5 million is a lot of money. Whether or not that's going to hold up, who really knows, yada, yada, yada. And so that was a really big deal. And a lot of people were clowning on the Oilers for making this trade, or not trade, the signing, excuse me. And then Zach Hyman had 54 points in 76 games played. He found himself as the net front presence in Edmonton. He got a point-per-game run in the playoffs as well. He then had 83 points in 79 games played the next year, also a point-per-game in the playoffs and over a point-per-game in the regular season. And then he had this season's worth of play, where Zach Hyman had 77 points in 80 games, so under a point-per-game, but he had 54 goals. I mean, Zach Hyman was under so much scrutiny for getting overpaid and maybe even overplayed, but this is the thing. The guy just has a very specific set of skills, and he will find you, and he will kill you. He was a player in Toronto that was more so put in that position to be the Austin Matthews digging up the puck guy in order to find the puck over to Matthews and then get the goal. 
Hyman was more of a presence on the boards. He wasn't really supposed to be the net front goal scoring guy. His job was simple. Free up the puck, give it to Matthews. But even though he was able to play with a guy like Austin Matthews, it wasn't really like he was working with Austin Matthews to get points himself. It was more so his role was there to supplement what Matthews could do. Now for Connor McDavid, it's a little bit different because Connor isn't really like a pure goal scorer. You know, he can score goals if he wanted to. That's why he had the 60 goal year the other season. He just proved to everyone, hey, I can win a Rocket Richard too if you guys want me to. I can, but it's not like his most preferred way to play the game. Instead, Connor McDavid and Zach Hyman together ended up as a duo where McDavid and Drysaddle would just move the puck around, Evan Bouchard would get involved too, Hyman is in the front of the goal, his big behind is all up in the goalie's face, nobody can see a thing, and then the puck gets thrown on net, Hyman's there either for a tip or a rebound, or he'd be there for the one tee in front. Hyman plays such a strong poised game, and he's immovable too. Those tree trunk legs of his are very tough to get out of the slot when he wants to be there. Not to mention that all those years of digging up pucks and winning board battles for the Maple Leafs, these skills translated into net front goal scoring ability. It's why, if you look at all the charts for the league this year, I mean, the number one guy at scoring goals in front was Zach Hyman. I think it was like 30 of those goals, something like that. I don't know if the number is correct, but he had scored 50 gosh darn goals this year, and most of them were in the slot. Zach Hyman had more slot goals than many NHL players this year had goals, period. And so Hyman being evaluated as an $11.3 million player, I mean, look, the numbers don't lie. What's a 50 goal score evaluated at? At least eight digits, right? And he had 20 something assists on top of that. Now, sure, it's very questionable when you look at prospects, for example, like if a guy's in the OHL or the QMJHL and he has a lot more goals and assists, it's a lot easier to be, okay, kind of wary of that. But if a guy's doing that at the NHL level, it's like, okay, look, you're at the top league in the world, doesn't even matter how good you are at defense or at playmaking, if you can put the puck in the back of the net and that's your bread and butter, if the team that you're on is using you in that role and you're succeeding, then there's no problems at all here. The Edmonton Oilers have one of the best contracts in the NHL in Zach Hyman, and I think the entire redemption story here, how the Oilers have two A-plus valued contracts, Connor McDavid, of course, and then Zach Hyman as well, it's going to bode well even more to the next few years here as Edmonton tries to rein it in and win themselves a Stanley Cup. We had talked about this yesterday, but the Oilers do have the number one odds at winning Lord Stanley's Grail in 2025, according to BetMGM. So if you're on that belief train as well, then you might be in for some very good things heading into the next few months here. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of Zach Hyman being evaluated as one of the biggest steals in the NHL contract-wise? How he was a $5.5 million AAV signing that a lot of people crapped on who eventually scored 50 goals in a season just a few years later. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below where the Oilers, where Hyman, where McDavid and Drysaddle go from here. What do you think the future holds in store for Hyman? Does he get 60 goals next year? Who really knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.